Before we get into today's topic, I'd just like to say this video is sponsored by VR Rock, which offer a full range of lens inserts for different VR headsets. They have now got their Quest 3 lens inserts ready to ship. And bear in mind, I have not tried them yet, but I do have a nice 10% discount code in the description below and if you wear glasses or not I would highly recommend you get your pair of lens inserts simply because it helps protect those expensive lenses. They also come with blue light filters which can help combat motion sickness and insomnia. Anyway let's get straight into today's video. Hello folks welcome to DCS World we are in the MetaQuest 3 using the link cable today and I've got everything on maximum resolution that is 1.5 in the uh, Oculus app. I was going to say Meta app, but it's still called Oculus for some reason. <laughs> and with that, it's about 5,400 and something. Just a crazy resolution. I'm still getting very nice frames though, but that is because I'm using a 4019. Here we go. This is a replay of a mission I did a while ago. That way I thought I could just concentrate on talking about the image quality and everything else. So, you know, in essence, the Quest 3 looks absolutely fantastic, as you would expect. Um, I said this in my previous video folks and I think for anybody who's upgrading from a Quest 2 it's an absolute no-brainer it looks fantastic however the problem I have here is the fact that you do need a 4090 graphics card to get anywhere close to the Reaver G2 with a 3080 so you see my issue here it's hard to recommend this headset when you do need a top-of-the-range graphics card and and I guess for those people who can afford a 4090, well, they probably can afford a Vari Aero as well. And to get the most out of your 4090, you really do need a DisplayPort connection high-end VR headset. Otherwise, it's kind of like, well, it's false economy, really, because your graphics card is running harder than it needs to to produce image quality that's not even close to anything that you get from, say, the Crystal and the Aero and the Beyond. That's why I do feel for people who are used to the Quest 2 and probably the Rift S, this is a fantastic upgrade for you. But for those who have a Reva G2, it's a bit tricky to recommend it. Unless, of course, you are absolutely fed up with Fresnel-based lenses like I am and you want beautiful, clear pancake lenses. And absolutely, this is where the MetaQuest really shines. Now at the moment I'm getting a few frame drops here and there but there's no wonder I'm recording whilst running the Quest 3 at a maximum resolution. It does look really nice but I can tell, oh, that's uh, my wingman, I can tell there is compression. It's just the way it is folks, you're always going to see that. And looking at the sky, yes I can see screen door effect folks. I mean it's not a big deal and I say that in my first video and thank you so much to all of you who have commented and subscribed I do really appreciate it but I can see a little bit of screen door effect and I will be honest about that is it a deal breaker absolutely not it really isn't but I just want to make you aware of it as there is a bit of mirror as well I am very picky with this sort of thing folks oh and that's the end of this little mission let me just replay it again folks so we can talk a bit more I'll see you in a moment right so we're back again I will say actually because it's a sunset scene that the colours in this do look really nice they remind me of the Reva G2 which is high praise indeed because that headset has really good colours for an LCD panel but of course you're not going to get the delights of QLED local dimming or obviously nowhere close to OLED either it's just the way things are but for a £500 headset it's okay I can read all the gauges guys I, I'm looking at all the gauges here I can read them but I can tell it's due to sort of the synthetic sharpening, it's due to super sampling. It doesn't feel like a natural sharpness that you would get in a native PC VR headset. Let's just follow this in for a minute. I'm getting a few frame drops there. For a moment I was uh, at 90 frames per second, then it went to 45. So I can tell sometimes the frame drops. I did try to recall this via Oculus Mirror, but it stuttered like a bitch so if any of you out there have got um, some tips for me not just with the recording side of things but anything you've tried in terms of settings I'll gladly try them guys because I am a bit new to the Quest 3 of course I need to work out what works best 
and I won't be posting a settings guide until I absolutely know for sure that what I'm using works with a range of different systems. So that, that will take some time, folks. Anybody who posts a settings guide in the next few days, they're just doing it for clicks because they're not going to know. Not yet, anyway. It takes time to hone all those settings and get them dialed in. But this is a very nice display. You know, don't get me wrong. And it's all about those lenses. The pancake lenses in this are absolutely spectacular. They really are beautiful. And you know, looking at this display now, it's not like I'm missing OLED or anything. I think it looks really nice. Now here's a good example. Looking at this aircraft from a distance, I can tell again that there is some compression there or the image looks softer because we're not using a HDMI port. Simple as that, and that will always be the case. But it does look great, and the lenses in this, well, it's the main party piece. Anyway, that's just a quick first impression of DCS World. Please let me know what you'd like me to test, and thank you again for all your support on the channel. It really means a lot. Take care, and bye for now.